What up, kids? My name is Logan, and today, uh, second episode of State of the Tribe. Today it is Saturday, November 9th. Um, we were about you know five hours away from the end of Florida State at Boston College, where Florida State won 38 31. Thank the Lord that we won. It's it was one of the most stressful games to watch for especially being you know a fan of Florida State is you know we're afraid to go bowless back to back years. But finally you win, we're gonna play a terrible Alabama State team and become bowl eligible. The Florida Florida State game does not really matter to us because we know we're not gonna win. So, ooh. Odell Haggins, the interim head coach, is 3-0 all time, but, you know, whenever this Florida State team looked way better, it looked more disciplined than I've seen. Uh, less penalties were thrown on us. And the offense looked tremendous. Kendall Bryles, when he's given more authority over the offense, the offense always plays better. It's been proven throughout the entire season that when Kendall Bryles has control, Good things are gonna happen. Saw so Jordan Travis, the young transfer from Louisville, make two big touchdown runs. That that was exciting. Hornibrook did not play though, so I I believe he's gonna start next week for Alabama State. Due to that, it is senior day. Um. So what what is Florida State gonna do from here? You know they're gonna come back, relax, have a good week of practice. You know, this week's going to be all about, you know, saying goodbye to the seniors who, you know, very few that are left, you know, has given all they could to this university, as well as final goodbyes to players like Cam Akers uh, and Tamari Ontario, who, you know, are believed to eventually declare for the NFL draft. Uh, Terry's projected to go solid second round pick while Cam Akers is floating between second and third round picks. I mean, if I, in my opinion, I think Cam Akers, if we make a good decision before, before he declares, there is a chance that he could stay for a senior year and maybe improve his stock and become a first round pick potentially. And now also uh, was it Marvin Wilson? Wilson will also say goodbye, even though he will not be playing on the field. So this is, um. This is a tough situation that Florida State is in. Uh, we're going to move on now to the coaching situation. Oh, I, I love Odell Haggins. You know, he's he is the rock of the team. He's been under both Bobby Bowden and Jimbo Fisher. So he knows how to win championships. He knows how to play well. He knows how teams should be disciplined and how they should perform to be the best they could be. It's also been a solid week of Taggart gone. Beautiful, a great week. In fact, Taggart actually had an effect on my grades. I didn't get lower than about 90 something on every assignment that I turned in this week. So this was a good week. You know, it all started great when I got the Bleacher Report notification that Willie Taggart was fired from Florida State University. But, you know, throughout that week, we heard many many, many rumors about who's going to be the next head coach for Florida State University. It started out with Bob Stoops, and then, you know, that died down, and then it went to Deion Sanders, and that, that happened more recently on Thursday and Friday. And that has gone, you know, less, you know, not as much down. People love the thought of Deion Sanders being a potential authority figure into the program. Rumor is that he could become the CEO of FSU football, and then he's gonna try to get a great coaching staff to come in and fill in the gaps for Florida State University. For me though, it's it's hard. This is an interesting coaching carousel year. Because you have great coaches, Bob Stoops, Matt Campbell, Mark Stoops, PJ Fleck, you got uh, Finkel out of Cincinnati, you got Norvell out of Memphis. Uh, Mike Leach out of Washington State has been thrown around here and there. So this is a, a very interesting year uh, uh, filled with great coaches that would definitely help the situation out. Problem is, though, a lot of those coaches, I don't see them leaving. P 
P.J. Flex signed a seven-year extension. You know, they just beat Penn State today, so he ain't going anywhere. You know, uh, currently Iowa State, Oklahoma is playing right now, and if Matt Campbell somehow pulls off an upset, he ain't going anywhere. Uh, Bob Stoops, he's too busy getting paid by Vince McMahon, so he's not going anywhere. Uh, was it Mike Norvell? He may leave. Finkel, I don't think he's going to leave. He loves Cincinnati. He loves being there. I don't see him going anywhere but Cincinnati. So I, we're looking at someone like Mike Norvell, maybe even Mike Leach. That would be a pretty interesting. A lot of offensive guys, a lot of people would want to play for him. Uh, but most likely we're going to see someone like Venables, uh, currently the defensive coordinator at Clemson University. Or, you know, there's been names thrown around like Jason Brown, former, you know, uh, last chance you head coach. Um, I mean, all we really want is a coach that can employ discipline on this team. And, you know, I watched College Game Day, and they talked about this, and they said Florida State University is too good to be a 5-5 five and five team in a terrible division where it's ran by Clemson and a Wake Forest team that hasn't played anyone until today when they lost Virginia Tech. They're going to lose next week at Clemson. So when it all comes down to it, it's this we sh this team should have not gone five and five. Combined overall, this team is ten points away from being an eight and two football team. Losses to Miami and losses to Clemson would only stand still. We lost to Wake Forest by two, and lost by Virginia by three, and lost to Boise State by five. We would have closed those games out. This team would be an 8-2 and two team. Taggart would still be the head coach. We wouldn't have to be worrying about Boston College game. We'd go 9-2 and two with a win over Alabama State, and then we'd go 9-3. and three. And that's a pretty decent bowl game for an ACC team. Maybe Nashville. You know, maybe Tax Slayer Bowl. Pinstripe Bowl. You know, a, a decent bowl game relative to ACC play. So once again, the coaching situation, it really hasn't changed for me. It's been about all the rumors I suspected. I, I do wish that Deion Sanders coming CEO of FSU football comes true. Because, man, I know Deion can recruit. I know he, he can. We would become a DGBU. I mean, you know, it's not Ohio State. It's not Alabama. It's not LSU. It's not Florida. It will become Florida State University if Deion Sanders becomes an authority figure in this program. All right, and then lastly, you know, going all over that, there's another potential, you know, important, you know, character that's having talks around, and that is the potential of De'Eric King, who was the quarterback for Houston, putting up numbers we haven't seen since Tim Tebow. Even though he doesn't get too much media attention, and mostly because there's many players putting up way better numbers, like Kyler Murray in the past year. Uh, you know, he decided to be redshirted for his senior season, may pretty much do a do-over. This Houston team has been very much lackluster. People thought they would be really well. They didn't start off well, and they, they're not looking good. They're probably not making a bowl game. But Derek King decided, hey, I'm just going to sit out, and I'm going to do my senior year all over again. And at first, people, there were theories about him staying in Houston. He, he's literally he's just going to sit out this year and play again, staying in Houston. But now there's theories coming out that that's not the case, that, in fact, Derek King is planning to transfer to top schools, preferably schools that have been you know, thrown around, has been Oklahoma, Florida, Georgia, and Florida State University. In fact, there are many people who are saying that Florida State is the number one team to receive Derek King based on Kendall Bryles, who was a former offensive coordinator at Houston, <coughs> in which Derek King thrived at. And then he left Kendall Bryles' first year in Florida State, did an okay job. You know, definitely could be better, but Derek King not doing well. He sees Florida State. He sees a, a you know a gap into consistent football at the quarterback position 
He's a pretty consistent player. He puts up numbers. And he comes in, he can sort of, you know, he can run the show. And he can make Blackman better. He can make Jordan Travis better. And he could potentially make Jeff Sims, who is currently a four star recruit from Sandalwood High School all the way in Jacksonville, Florida, you know, potentially making him better. And that would spark uh, the program as an offensive threat. When Derrick King runs offenses that he is used to, you know, there is, there's going to be some success. I, I mean, I have mixed feelings about him coming. You know, yes, it could be great. He'll be a great player. You know, FSU has been known to have great quarterbacks ever since Chris Weinke. You know, you had Christian Ponder, EJ Manuel, Jameis Winston, Francois for a season before his knee exploded. And ever, you know, ever since Francois got hurt against Alabama, we have not seen consistent play by both James Blackman and Alex Hornibrook. So it's definitely an interesting uh, situation. I would love him to come. You know, we take all talent that we need. Um, I mean, the dream scenario for me is Deion Sanders becomes a authority figure, a CEO of FSU football, and he brings in talent. Let's say he brings in Mark Stoops out of Kentucky. It may, you know, it makes sense for Mark Stoops to leave and go to a program that he, you know, he coached, the defensive coordinator who won a national championship. And then keep Kendall Browse at offensive coordinator, bring in Derek King from Houston. Cam Akers doesn't declare for the draft. And you're looking at a team that has kept the talent sustainable and making the team better. I mean, this is this has definitely been an interesting year for Florida State. Um, we're, we still got two weeks left and as well as the bowl game and then as well as the rest of November, every day in November, I'm keeping an eye on what's Florida State going to do because they promised us. Florida State University did promise that they will find a new head coach hire within the month. Uh, very similar town, Nebraska did it uh, two years ago with Scott Frost and UCF. Well, I thank you guys for watching. Um, I'll be making another video next week, probably the Sunday after. Oh, man, my statements because I got plans throughout the day and I probably won't be able to get to this, but we never know. Expect it. Another video, stay of Tribe 3. We're going to have reactions to the Alabama State game and rumors that would occur throughout the week. Uh, stay tuned. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe your, you know, to this channel. Uh, and also, you know, I feel free to comment to, you know, down below on your opinions. You think this is going to happen. What about this? What about that? What should I talk about in my next one? All right. You know, it just helps improves everything. All right. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys later.